Good morning, walking through the showgrounds. First thing in the morning, it's a weird experience at first, but there's something special about it. G'day everyone, I'm Tim Thompson. And I'm here with Kate Norris from Melbourne Polytechnic. Hi. How are you, Kate? Good, thanks. Kate is currently up to her armpits in the bum of a cow. Would you like to explain to us what you're doing here, Kate? <laughs> so I'm clipping a steer ready for a carcass competition. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to enhance his good features and I'm trying to hide his bad ones. And she's doing a good job of it. She had a go at my hair, look at me. I turned out pretty good. So we're here at the Royal Show with a combined school and TAFE team. And we've got how many how many cattle in the competition this uh, year? We've got nine in this year. We've got six Angus, and we've got three Angus Charolais Cross. And we're pretty excited about how we're going to go. We've got some fantastic sponsors, haven't we, Kate? We have. We've got some awesome sponsors. We've got uh, uh, Bellevue Angus, uh, Tipperbara Angus, Reeds Stock Feeds. Whittlesea Embroidery, Live Work Play, and Yan Yan Stock Feed. So Chris, we're here at the show, polishing brass. Yeah. That's pretty strange, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a fun hey. job, fun job. Yeah. So you're, you're doing Cert 3 at the moment? Yeah, Cert 3 yeah. Agriculture. Cert 3 Agriculture, and yep. as part of that, you've got to show some cattle at the show. Yeah, one of the modules. One, yeah. of, your, one of your modules, yep. one of your uh, prerequisites for yep. passing. Yeah. How's it going so far, mate? Um, oh, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy to actually just be able to be in this experience like that's um, incredible isn't it yeah i'm like, sure a lot of um uh places doing so three night culture probably wouldn't go this far to get the students to go to melbourne like the melbourne show i oh, know it's pretty so, big isn't yeah it? it's yeah. pretty big yeah. have you been to other shows before or is this the first um, off for you uh first off for of this big of a show I, um i grew up in queensland in a really small town so our shows okay. were nothing compared to the size of this so yeah, yeah. maybe like maybe 100 people that max so this is Pretty good. Pretty big. It? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Chris is going to take us for a little bit of a behind the scenes at the show. Come on guys, I'll show you behind the scenes of the show. So Chris, behind the scenes. <laughs> It's not all just about showing the animals. No, it really isn't. Especially now, everyone's um, run off their feet. So Dwayne, you're an expert fitter, you uh, clip cattle, yeah. um, what are you doing at the moment mate, you're finishing off the back line here? Yeah, just trying to widen him out a bit, make him look a little bit thicker across the top. So if we come around the back line now, we can see what you've done. So that makes that a lot wider, makes it look like he's got a lot more muscle through here, a lot more back cover. Whereas before with it peaked up, it looks like they're a little bit underdone. Dwayne's a perfect example of one of those great people that you meet in agriculture. Even though he had his own cattle at the show, he still found plenty of time to help the students prepare theirs and understand what they were doing. So if you've got an animal that comes in, it's got a head that comes like that, and you try to leave a little bit in there, you're going to find that it, it, it draws your eye more, so we want to take it off. 
If you've got an animal like an Angus that comes in, it's got a nice fine point, like that's the top of his head there. If we can then leave this little bit of hair in the middle here and glue it up, that's gaining us two centimetres times by four, we're right. Um, so it's, it's those little things like that that add a little bit more length, therefore a little bit more dollars in your pocket. Same as like your tail head, we leave that tail head here, we'll try and glue that up, bring it out. What that's going to do is it, it squares them off, gives them that square box appearance that we want. So if you think everything that's not in that square box gets cut off, so we're going to come down, we're going to cut him off with the joints and he's slaughtered. We're then going to cut through here, we've now got a square box. So we want that gives that eye illusion that it's actually square. Then we shave this out, which brings it in level with the butt. So the idea is from the furthest out part of, of the butt, we're going to come across and shave. Below that, you want to fill this hole, which is then going to give you the rest of that square appearance. So that's why the tail up. And then underneath, you're going to do the same thing. So how he's got this real big gap here, we're going to actually try and fill that, take less hair out of there as we can. Take a bit more off around the fizzle, which will bring that up, which gives you more of that square appearance. So that's why we leave that there. Come down, slick the shoulders, because we still want ease of carving in our stud cattle. But with a steer, we actually want to bring that in to make this look bigger. So you take Where away you from somewhere to make somewhere else look better. So if you're arc, like yeah. the back end, if you want this to look bigger, we're actually going to come down to the joint, and we're going to take more hair out of this joint here, which will actually make this look bigger. If you clip this, you're actually going to make it look smaller, not bigger. That, that's the basics stop? of it. Please, Head, neck, wriggling. tail. You can get a good top on them. Clean that belly up. So take it, it away and then blend it in. Yeah. yeah. You, can get, you can get any animal to a show and it'll be presentable. So, Kate, how many steers have you uh, fitted up today? Five. And you got one to go? One to go, three tomorrow. Don't cry. No. <laughs> Sorry, not yet. <laughs> And it's team meeting time with the Melbourne Polytechnic Mount Lilydale team. Be very careful, don't rip Joe has told me that they are running a bit behind in the sheep section, so it is unlikely that we'll be starting at 5.30. Those that are handling are going to go and get their clean jeans, clean boots and white shirt on. I have your ties, gentlemen, and your scarves, young ladies. Because this is a school team, meetings are held. Kate's really careful to look after all the needs of the students. And because they're all novices, every aspect and every detail is noted and managed very carefully. A vital part of showing the cattle is also making sure that you show yourself off well too. So there's a lot of scurrying about, about a, an hour before we go in the ring, with everyone getting themselves nicely primed. Have a look at you. Um, yeah. Have we managed to fix him yet, Kate? Mm, no fixing any Fixed of them. Fixed enough. <laughs> right, next steer goes in that chute. Even though it's a big team, everyone has a part to play and mucks in to help each other. Those that are going into the ring need to stay nice and clean, so those who are waiting to go into the ring later, muck in and give them a hand getting ready. And now it's half past nine at night. What happens at half past nine at night on show day? This is what happens at half past nine at night. <laughs> Look at them, they're all delusional. <laughs> so we're here with Willie Milne. Um, now Willie, you've had a long and distinguished career in cattle. Um, but, yeah, possibly could say that. Uh, I guess uh, if you say 50 years is a long time, it, that's the, that's the uh, uh, amount of time I've been involved in 
breeding stud cattle and uh, having association with farming in Australia. It's been an enjoyable journey, I can yeah. tell you that much, yeah. Now you're a great supporter of the youth here and the, and the youth programs that we have here. I know you've certainly been involved in helping us to make connections to find cattle for the kids to handle. Do um, oh. you see it as important? Absolutely, it's our future. You know, yeah. there wasn't uh, there wasn't the uh, talent I guess around when I started off. There wasn't as much talent in the industry then as there is now, and it's quite obvious. Um, even yesterday, when the steers were being paraded, uh, the the standard the, the of the youth today is and the enthusiasm of the youth. Is, is oozing out of the scenes it truly is yeah, and, and what Isn't we that awesome? and what we can do from now on with that uh, that potential we've got is, is something really valuable I think in it is, yeah. so the future of ag from a from a from your perspective over a 50 year period is looking pretty positive at the moment oh I, I would I, I would say so and things are changing all the time in agriculture and, and different ways and different means of doing things to what we were doing years ago and uh, it's uh, the, the concept's entirely different but you've got to you've got to move but the basics it. are still the same the basics are we're still, still the handling same. cattle we're yeah, still we're learning st about them we're still getting up in the morning and working as hard as we can yeah and you've got to have the passion for the industry i think yeah, that's yeah. that's the, that's the secret to it secret and to anything really absolutely and your way in your way into the industry was through showing through showing cattle. Uh, and you're uh, seeing that as still being really vital and yeah, relevant I, I, today? Yeah, I certainly do. I certainly think it's a, it's, a, it's a window, a shop window to the breed, to what you're doing in the industry. I think it's it's all pretty good. If we can keep it together, such as this organisation is, uh, it'll all be good for the industry in the long run. I mean, yeah. I know a lot, a lot of people shy away from showing these days, but I think it's an integral part of uh, learning. And it's investing back in the youth and in the future of the industry, oh, isn't it? It gives the youth something to hang the hat on and, and get involved with. And yeah. that's where you, yeah. you find your connections, you find your friends here. Uh, that's, that's the sort of thing that, uh, yeah. that holds true to you. So now it's a final photo. What, we don't want... Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse into what ag schools are doing to connect youth to agriculture through showing. Until next time, I look forward to seeing some of you around. Don't forget, like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps it out.